Okay, we're going to evaluate a number of limits. This is from a section on Hopital's rule, so that'll probably be our plan A, if possible. We'll take the limit as x goes to infinity of the quantity x plus cosine x over 2x plus 1. Now, cosine x tends to oscillate back and forth, which says it's going to probably be problematic by itself in Hopital's rule. But we could say, hey, the numerator goes to infinity, the denominator goes to infinity, this is a candidate for Hopital's rule. If you ran Hopital's rule just to start with, uh, you would get something on the order of, let's see, the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 minus sine x over 2. Well, that's a little bit problematic because the denominator, of course, doesn't go to 0, but the numerator doesn't go to anything. That limit does not exist. So, Hopital's rule, remember, only applies if, after you've taken the derivative, this limit exists. So that's sort of out. Well, what else could I do with this? Well, because that cosine's in the numerator, you can actually split the numerator. This is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of x over 2x plus 1 plus the limit as x goes to infinity of cosine x over 2x plus 1, provided that both of these pieces exist. Now, this piece is pretty straightforward. You could multiply by 1 over x. Since we're in the Hopital section and this is still infinity over infinity, we might just use Hopital's there. Sounds fun to me. The derivative is 1 over 2, so that limit's going to be 1 half. What about this piece? This piece here if you have a cosine over something that goes to infinity, you may remember that that's just a prime candidate for the squeeze theorem. Why? Because this cosine of x over 2x plus 1 is always less than or equal to, for, for positive values of x, 1 over 2x plus 1, and it's always greater than or equal to negative 1 over 2x plus 1. The snazzy thing is that this piece right here goes to 0, right, because it's 1 over a very large number. This is negative 1 over a very large number, so these both go to 0. This is stuck between it, so by the squeeze theorem, this piece goes to 0. Well, so that's the limit uh, equals 1 half. The limit is 0. Both limits exist, so they combine. The whole thing is 1 half. This is a little more standard uh, Hopital problem, it looks like. Uh, notice that e to the uh, 0 would be 1. This would be 0. That would be negative 1, so the numerator goes to 0. This goes to 1 minus the square root of 1 minus 0, so that also goes to 0. That little positive sign says that this comes from the way that's well-defined, so this is just ever so slightly greater than, uh, oops, this is ever so slightly less than 1. Never mind, uh, this is defined either side of 1, I suppose. It's 0 that's my problem. Okay, so, Hopital's rule. I'm going to take the derivative of the numerator, take the derivative of the denominator. Here, my derivative, I have to use the chain rule, e to the x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, plus 1 over the derivative of the denominator, derivative of this is 0, minus, this is this whole quantity to the 1 half, so we'll say 1 half, this thing to the negative 1 half, so 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. Using the chain rule, though, I have to take the derivative of the inside, that's negative 2x. Now I need to simplify, so uh, Hopital's rule is sort of a dance of Hopital itself and algebra, so notice this is a negative power in the denominator, so that'll be a positive power in the numerator. You have a negative one-half and a negative two, those cancel. So algebraically, this simplifies to e to the x squared times 2x plus 1. What's that go to? Let's just check real fast. That's uh, e to the zero, so that's about uh, getting close to one times 2 times 0, so that's getting close to 0, plus 1. This whole thing's approaching 1. This has a negative 1 half, so in the numerator it would have a positive 1 half, so 
that piece uh, is 1 minus 0, the square root of that. So this is getting really close to 1. So 1 times 1, the numerator is getting close to 1. The denominator, now this is moved, so we just have an x, is getting close to 0 from the positive direction. Now, if the numerator is a positive number and the denominator is a very small number that's positive, this whole thing approaches infinity. Uh, that's a form that's valid for Hopital's rules, so the entire thing approaches infinity. Okay, so on to this problem where we have the limit as x goes to 1 of 1 over the natural log of x minus 1 over x minus 1. This is an indeterminate form, but notice this piece is going uh, depending on the side to, actually not depending on the side, yes, yes, so uh, depending on the side to plus or minus infinity, this piece right here depending on the side is going to plus or minus infinity. Well, that's not a form I can apply Hopital's to. Here's where the algebra comes in. Let's get a common denominator. Common denominator that seems natural is natural log of x times 1 minus x to get that as the denominator over here, I need a 1 minus x. To get that as the denominator over here, I need a natural log of x. So I multiply this by natural log, sorry, multiply this by 1 over, 1 uh, times a clever 1, which is x minus 1 over x minus 1, to get x minus 1 over that whole denominator. This I multiplied times natural log of x over natural log of x to get natural log of x over this entire denominator. Now you see what I have in my denominator is, let's see, that's going to 0, that's going to 0, so I have a 0 in the denominator. This is going to 1 minus 1 minus 0, so that's 0 over 0. Now I'll apply Hopital's rule. So by the way, when you have a form like this, almost always what you do is you get a common denominator. Okay. Taking the derivative of the numerator, I get 1 minus 1 over x. Taking the derivative of the denominator, I need to use the product rule. That's 1 over x times x minus 1 plus natural log of x. Now here's one of those places where it's going to be problematic unless I can make this a simple fraction instead of a compound fraction within a fraction. How do I get rid of these 1 over x's? Let's multiply by x over x. So this is just algebraic manipulation to simplify. This becomes x minus 1, because that x distributes. In the denominator, this times that becomes x minus 1, this and this cancel. Then I have to distribute it to this term, plus x times the natural log of x. Hmm, well let's see what happened here. Uh, the de numerator is still 0, the denominator is still 1 minus 1 plus 0. Mm, okay, well, I think we're getting simpler, so let's apply Hopital's rule again. We can still do that because it's an indeterminate form. Let's see what we have now. The numerator is 1, that's the kind of derivative I like. This is 1 plus natural log of x, using the product rule by the way, plus x times 1 over x. Okay, so what do we have here? A little more algebraic simplification. That's 1 over, let's see, 1 divided, it's x divided by x, this is just 1, so 1 plus 1, 2 plus the natural log of x. As x goes to 1, this thing goes to 0, and I have 1 half. Who to thunk? There we go. Okay, one last uh, limit problem here. The limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the x to the third. So this is an indeterminate form. This piece, right, gets really close as x goes to infinity to 1. This goes to infinity. So 1 to the infinity, depending on whether this gets to 1 faster or that goes to infinity, could be uh, a variety of things. So, well, how do I deal with that? Well, when you have an exponent, you always want to apply e to the natural log of this whole beast. 
e to the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x to the x to the third. I'll write that lightly because the whole reason of applying natural log is you take this and put it in front. That's a property of the natural logarithm. We're not done yet, though, because I need this to be a fraction to apply Hopital's rule. Now, the limit of e to the something or other is e to the limit of that same something or other. So I'll do that. This piece, notice that x to the third, I could write as 1 over x to the third in the denominator, or x to the negative third. x to the third in the numerator is x to the negative third in the denominator. Why do I do that? Well, notice that now my numerator, as x goes to infinity, this is natural log of 1, it's approaching 0. Uh, if I have x to the negative third, or that's 1 over x to the third, and the denominator is going to 0, that's getting close to 0 as well. Now I can apply Hopital's rule, which is ultimately what I was hoping to do to begin with. Isn't that wonderful? The e will stay put, the limit still going to infinity, the numerator, that's 1 over 1 plus 1 over x, but by the chain rule I have to multiply times the derivative of this, which is negative x to the negative 2 over the derivative of this, which is negative 3x to the negative 4. Let's go ahead and think through how we might simplify this. Uh, since I, I'm not really a fan of this whole thing down here, why don't I go ahead and multiply the whole thing times negative 1 3rd x to the 4. Negative 1 3rd x to the 4. Why? Well, because those are reciprocals. So now I have e to the limit as x goes to infinity of, let's see what happens. If I have x to the negative 2 times x to the 4, that's just x squared. The negative signs cancel. So I now have in my denominator, I have, uh, let's see, I have a 3. times 1 plus 1 over x. Well, that didn't work fabulously well. I've still got a fraction inside a fraction. I guess I need to multiply by x over x again. There might have been a faster way. Still using that algebraic simplification stuff. So what are we at now? Well, now we're at x to the third over 3x plus 3. Now that still goes to infinity over infinity, so that's still an indeterminate form, but I can sort of see the writing on the wall now. When I apply Hopital's, can you see that this is going to be 3x squared over 3? Those reduce, that goes to infinity. e to the infinity is again infinity. There we have it.